G'day viewers, my name is Graham Stevenson and I'd like to invite you to come on a journey of creativity and learning and adventure through the series Colour in Your Life. There's an artist in every family throughout the world and lots of times there's an artist deep down inside all of us as well. So grab your kids, your brothers, your sisters, your aunties, uncles and mums and dads and come and see how some of the best artists in Australia do what they do. Well, good day, viewers, and uh, welcome back to Colour in Your Life again. We're with an Adelaide artist today. Yes, we do get around. And uh, I'd like to introduce you to Terry Jackson. Hi. Terry's a wonderful pencil and graphite artist, and we're going to be spending the day with her. She specialises in a lot of African animals as well, which is quite fascinating. Mm. I think the stuff's just, just amazing what she does. Uh, and she's going to be doing an elephant for us today. Yes. That's correct. Tell me a little bit more about your history. I mean, you've really just sort of ended the world of art since 2005. Yeah, yeah so, I'm, um, a, I'm a newbie. Yeah. I, I started in, um, I, I did a triple portrait uh -huh. of my sister for her 40th birthday. Okay. And that's basically the first proper realistic thing I'd done. Sure. Um, you know, people saw it and said, oh, do one for me, do one for me. And so I did a few more. Yeah. And then that Christmas I was given a, um, a graphite print of, Elsa the Lioness by oh. Gary Hodges. Yes, another really, really great yeah. artist too, yeah. Yeah, and um, I thought, oh, I'll give it a go, yeah. you know, I'll have a go. And the first one I did was, it was really rough, the, the paper was atrocious, the pencils were cheap and nasty, but it looked really good. Sure. So I thought, oh yeah, I can probably do this. Yeah. And that, that's where it started and that's where it, it just took off. I, I, think, I think it's a great example in, in many senses that, that um, Terry's, uh, one of those artists that, that had an inherent ability and I think that this is what the show has been doing to other people as well is that uh, you really didn't have a lot of formal education mm. but you just simply had a natural ability that you really weren't aware that was there. I had no idea. Yeah and now you've just honed it to the extent and obviously as we go through you'll see some of the, the graphite and pencil drawings that she's done which are just superb, it's the only way to describe them. But sort of coming from there to here, I mean you've won some awards um, obviously your work's being sold now, you really mm. are focusing on being a full-time professional artist. Oh, absolutely. And, and doing an amazing job. I mean, the work really is spectacular. Uh, you're going to draw an elephant. You've actually made a start. I have. I've just, I've just done the outline. Obviously because it's uh, pencils and graphite. Mm. You have pencils and graphite in your hand there. I do. And tell me about the pencils. As I, as I said before, I actually use pencils and then sharpen them myself. But you obviously like uh, the click-through. I do. Yeah. Um, these are a Stadler clutch pencil. Now, I, mm -hmm. I mean, they're all they're all the same colour. Yeah. But I have to differentiate. Like that's a four B, H B, and two B. Oh, you just that's them pretty much it. all yeah. I all I use. Okay. You don't have to worry about sort of running out of pencils and uh -huh. you know. So they're they're really really very good. And you've also I just saw that you've got an electric and these are amazing if you're if you're doing drawings. Yeah. These are just amazing, particularly if you look at the the tiger and the lions. That Terry has done, particularly mm. with the whiskers, the electric erasers are just fabulous because you can just simply wind the electric eraser around where would you norm where you'd normally find the whisker, mm. and it just it just takes the takes the graphite straight off it the page. Does. It does. I mean, they're, they're fantastic. Now this is a quite a cheap one. It's a J car, and um, this one is actually from the UK, uh -huh. but you can get them from America. Unfortunately, you can't get them in Australia. And I just sharpen it on a little piece of sandpaper. Ah, there you go, because I was so, wondering about the line. So you just put it directly down to the sandpaper? Directly on the sandpaper until you, until you get a flat end on it. And then like it just that. gives you the edge you want. It gives it. you the flat edge like that. And uh, yeah, then you can just use it, you know, just as a sort of a sweep That's like that. That's cool. Yeah, they're excellent. They really are fantastic and they save a, a lot of work. And also, I can see that you've got some paper stumps. In, in your hand as well. Yes. Uh, obviously designed for smudging and then moving graphite around. Oh yes. I mean, I hate doing cross hatching, mm -hmm. uh, that kind of shading. I, I can't do it. It's, mm -hmm. It takes up so much time. It's annoying. It's, it just frustrates me. You know, you use your different sizes, and the little tiny ones can get into, 
you know, all the little tiny corners and stuff like that. And so, yeah, I use them for so many things. Um, but we're going to use all of these things that you have got here yes. to, uh, to put our drawing together today. Mm. But let's make a start on our elephant. Okay. And then uh, follow through the process and I'll bombard Terry with a whole bunch of questions as we mm, go okay. through. But let's make a start. Now, even, even what you're doing right there. Yep. Tell me what you're doing in there. Okay, so now this, this is um, this is just an old old little pot. <coughs> and what I've done is I've put all the sharpenings from my pencils mm -hmm. in there. I tend not to use the graphite powder that you can use, that you buy uh -huh. because it's too fine sure. and it clogs, it just seems to clog up the paper. Uh -huh. But this is just shavings from these pencils which I've which I've collected in here. Okay. And so it's the same pencil that I'm using. Oh, okay, okay. Um, the uh, like I said, the other one's too too fine, too dark, mm -hmm. and um, just doesn't work properly. Okay. So I've just loaded up my stump. Yeah. And you just use that as your, you know, to start Look start the work. Okay. And you can just, you know, you can put it on very light. It's really like it's really like a smudged charcoal even before you've even it is, started. It's, it is. It is. I mean, some people do think I used use charcoal. Sure. Um, but. Uh, you know, it's it, it's just I see. I just use these for drawing in. Yeah. I get the the colour with these, and then if it's you know if it's a bit too much, I, of course I've got my ever ready blue tack. Yeah. Always. Yes. Um, I find the blue tack is is a much cheaper and better than um, the needable erasers. Sure. And yeah, I just you know, I just pull it off. Just pull it all off. It's really easy. Oh, that's great. All right, well I can see, and you do what I do when I draw, and what a lot of other graphite artists do, mm. is that you put the eye in. And I, I do. And I think even before you start, if the eye's in there, you build the personality around exactly. it. Exactly, if yeah. the eye doesn't start, yeah. if the eye isn't good, I know the whole thing isn't gonna work. Sure. And so what, in, what inspired you, uh, particularly with the African animals? I mean, I, they're one of my favourites as well, and I've painted a lot of them. Mm. But uh, just the size and the majesty of a lot of them, I think, is amazing. I think it's because they're um, things that we don't see every day. Sure. And they're so, I mean, they're so different. Mm -hmm. We see the koalas, mm -hmm. and we see the possums, and we mm -hmm. see the kangaroos. But things like elephants, you have to go to a zoo. Mm -hmm. And in Adelaide Zoo, we don't have elephants. Okay. So it's, you know, there's no, there's, the last elephant in Adelaide Zoo was Samoan. Okay. I was only a kid, we used to put uh, peanuts on the posts and feed the elephant. And that was, that was the last I remember of it. And I must admit, I do work for photos. Yes, yeah. Which I find off the internet and always, always get permission. But I always try to find something I will spend hours and hours and hours looking for. Mm -hmm. Just the right one. Mm -hmm. And I just love, I love animals. Sure. I've done Australian natives. I've done a wombat and Tasmanian devil. Mm -hmm. Done those. The only one I've had ever had problems with is a koala. And I will do that. I'm determined I'm going to do that one day. It's going to work. It will work. <laughs> yes, yeah. there are some, uh, some amazingly talented uh, artists, obviously, out there as well. Oh, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. But, um, I mean, I never thought that I'd be one of them. And, and as I said, guys, it's uh, the, the natural ability is there. A lot of people have started to paint and draw because of the series, which I think is great. And we want you to do more of that. But I think Terry's a classic example of somebody that had an ability, really wasn't aware of it. And now all of a sudden, there it is. And it's just blossoming everywhere for her. It which is. It's really cool. It is. I'm loving it. I'm absolutely loving it. I'm trying to encourage my grandchildren to do it. But, you know, <laughs> so my, that, my kids are talented. Yeah. Though. What are the names of these three beautiful grandchildren that you have? Uh, their names are Isabel, she's three and a half. Hi, Izzy. <laughs> and um, Jaden's one. And Riley, uh, he's only three weeks old. So, okay. Well, yeah, he'll be able to look back beautiful. on this one day and say that was grandma. That's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> look what she's doing. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, what you're doing at the moment is you're really just sort of blocking in a lot of base colour. Yes. Uh, which is, and I, and I think probably when you draw a lot, a lot of the time, depending on how you draw, and this is the beauty of the rubber that you have, is that you can take out a lot of those areas, can't you? Oh, yeah. With the rubber. Yes, absolutely. With the, with the, with the electric, electric rubber, rubber, too. You can just yeah. re remove what you don't want there. That's right. Yeah. I mean, if, if I wanted to, um, you know, just take out, see, it makes such a beautiful, clean 
It certainly line. does, doesn't it? It does, really does. I mean, this one isn't particularly sharpened at the moment. Yeah. But you can do such very clean, clean lines, and, and it's just, it's just absolutely, and it doesn't seem to matter yeah. how dark you've done it. I mean, you can get through black. Just, you may have to go through it two or three times, sure. but it will eventually take it back to a, a fairly white state. Yeah, it's amazing. All right, well, I think I'm going to let uh, Terry continue to block in the elephant. Uh, she's got a little bit of work to do there. And uh, we'll just um, duck away for a little while and uh, come back shortly. From what I can tell, you've actually taken out a few art awards as well. So, uh, what's the what's the Waterhouse Natural History Art Prize? When's, that's obviously conducted in Adelaide. Yes. Oh yeah. well, it, no, it's an international oh, okay. competition. Okay. Um, they normally get about a thousand, eight hundred to a thousand entries from around the world. Okay. Um, and it's a it's a juried exhibition. It's actually the biggest um, natural history art prize in the Southern Hemisphere, I think. Uh huh. And it's held, actually held at the Adelaide Museum. Yeah. You know, just the prestige of, of being in the Waterhouse is just, it's amazing. That was great. It's absolutely, absolutely incredible. It's like getting into the Archibald. But I also noticed that you've got some wipes there, so you, you don't worry about that, but you continue to, continue to wipe your hand, do you? Yes, I do. Okay. I'm, normally I wash my hands about every 10 minutes. Okay. Your fingertips in particular, when you're holding a pencil, they will sweat. Yeah. So when, obviously when you're doing your drawings, which, which areas are, are important to you? I mean, uh, generally, I, admittedly, I put the eye in first. I know that you do other artists as well uh, to bring up the character, but do you work left to right or what do you try and try and do? How do you, how do you put it down as you go along? Because my hand is on the work a lot, mm -hmm. I do work from left to right. Okay. Um, I, I, it would be terrible to work the other way and constant smudging. Sure, sure. Um, so yeah, left to right, top to bottom and um, I generally like to get the, the, the darks in uh, first before I do all the detail, mm -hmm. you know, all of these, these areas here, sure. under here. Um, I mean, so a, a lot of people are afraid to use a lot of dark. Yeah. I prefer if it's meant to be black, yeah. use black. Put it, make it as dark as it needs to be. And obviously because you put the base uh, or the smudge coat down underneath yeah. and then use the rubber, you're obviously able to pick up those lighter areas, but mm. it's very difficult to do that when another, with another drawing style where people leave the light out. But that's obviously the advantage of using the eraser. It, exactly. Simple as that, yeah. That's exactly right. I mean, yeah, I mean, particularly when you can utilise those rubbers to really highlight uh, the light. Mm. The light's so important. I mean, you really don't have colour to do that. No. With the black and white, you've really got to rely very heavily on the various tonal values. Yes. A lot of your work is very uh, character orientated, would be the best way I could describe it, because it really, really does display the emotions of the animals. It's just not a shot uh, that's, a, that's an, an irrelevant shot. Mm. There's a great deal of character in the moment that you create with these animals, and you obviously do that on purpose? I do. I, I prefer something that has, that, that shows the, the true nature of the animal. Mm -hmm. rather than being just an elephant or just a zebra. You know, mm -hmm. you can draw a, an elephant that's looking at you. Mm -hmm. But I prefer something that, that shows a little bit of fun. Sure. A um, bit of character. Yes. And uh, I think it just adds, adds more interest to the, the overall finished product. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I will scan through literally thousands upon thousands upon thousands of shots. Sure until I find just the one that, and it has to be the one mm -hmm. that does that. Sure. That's the one that catches my eye. Um, and I will see hundreds and hundreds that I like, yeah. but they're not just not quite right. Um, so, and yes, I, I know I've met some wonderful people on, on Flickr and things like that yeah. through this, you know. I've seen that some of them are actually, uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll sort of screen them up as we go along, but some of them are quite whimsical. Mm. Uh, the little chimpanzee with the daisy chain. Yes. And then the, uh, the elephant with the kite. Mm. Uh, I think that they're, they're shots that really have sort of a, a, you know, a human element to them as well, funnily enough. Mm. That's a new thing that I've just started. Uh -huh. um, I call it the Whimsy, Wild Whimsy Collection. And I decided just to add a little bit of fun 
to the whole thing mm -hmm. by I wanted a bit of, I wanted to try something with a little bit of color in it so the first one I did was actually go fly a kite mm -hmm. which is the kite which, which is the elephant flying an elephant's ear I thought well that's quite cute so I tried new ones mm -hmm. and it's they've actually proven to be the most popular pieces of work that I've done so far yeah and I was looking when I was looking at um, Terry's work um, I've done a lot of licensing throughout the world. If anybody wants to ask about that, they can come in. But licensing is where you actually take an artist's image and you rebrand name it onto other companies' um, products, really, throughout the world. Mm -hmm. Just part and parcel of being an artist. Uh, it's not just a matter of painting a picture and sticking it on a wall in a gallery. It's really utilising all of the sources that you have throughout the world uh, to be able to mould your career and get it to where you need it to go. The idea of it is, is to make a living out of what you do. If you can do that, I think that you're a successful artist no matter what you paint. Mm. Yeah. I'm not quite sure if the viewers are aware that you're shaping, you're shaping that little bit of blue tack mm. so that you'll put an edge on it. Oh yes. So, so that if you need to take something out, she squeezes the edge mm. and then puts the edge down so that, that that edge is able to go in and then pick up that graphite or the pencil mm. so that you can actually work on your sources of light. Very yeah. important stuff. I mean, you can get quite a, a nice straight edge. Look at that. I mean, just a very fine yeah, edge. It's very, just very by, fine. Just by picking it up. Yeah. Concerners, we do have a, a social responsibility. If you have an ability yourself, I think it's important that uh, this is part of the reason that we created this show in the first place. But you, you need to give back to society as well. Mm. Um, and that's what you do also in a number of different situations with hospitals, um, you know, donating your work to assist other people. I think it's extremely important to do that. I've recently had a show at the Royal Adelaide Hospital. Mm -hmm. It's in the Challenger Gallery, mm -hmm. it's called. It's actually a corridor. The profits go to the hospital. Great. Also during the Sala events, which is the South Australian Living Artists, I've had two in Santos Conservation Centre. Okay. Where also, it goes to the zoo. I'm donating all that to the zoo. I've also donated to charities mm -hmm. where I've donated artworks to help the homeless youth of South Australia and one or two other Great stuff. works. Mm, you know, very. Just donated because you know, it's what I do. Very, <laughs> so very, I think very, that's very what you need to do. Yeah. So you can see this is moving along really nicely, but obviously because it takes Terry a little while to put these together, we're going to give her uh, some time on her own again now so that she can move ahead and um, we'll come back very shortly and see what she's up to. And all of these rubbers that she uses are quite fascinating because it really helps to bring up these highlights. And you've got another one there, mm. which is that guy there. And you're just saying that we can only get these. I think all the art stores should be actually be listening to us today. You can only get a lot of this stuff from overseas. Mm. So, and this is obviously, you know, it's, this is what you can do with the right equipment. And the right equipment is very important. It's very important. Yeah, but this is this is amazing. But uh, you've obviously used a number of those as you've gone along to highlight, I particularly have. obviously in your little light areas. You just sort of pick it up. Yeah, this is a very fine eraser, yeah. and to get the to get the edge on that, mm -hmm. I use a pair of scissors. Okay. Um, when it gets to about that stage, I'll cut it off. I don't need to at the moment, but that will give just a very, very, very fine oh, look at that. Yes. line. Oh, it's amazing. I tend to rely on my erasers a lot. I um, I think erasers are almost the right erasers are almost as important as pencils. Mm -hmm. And I think that this paper that you've got here, I, I'm just feeling the surface of this paper really lends itself well, well to be able to do that. Oh, it does. Yeah. It's a very smooth paper. It's almost uh, uh, almost like a glass paper. It's so yeah. smooth. 
and, and I started off, when I first started off, I had one with a bit of tooth yeah. and I didn't like it. Okay. It was just too difficult. You couldn't get beautiful smooth lines or yeah. anything like that. So I decided to get smoother and smoother and I found this one. And I think this is probably about as smooth as the Bristol Smooth. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I'm not sure, I'm not sure, but this is a lovely paper. Mm, and I, I think any smooth paper yeah. lends itself to graphite. And as you can see, uh, we've actually been able to time lapse one of Terry's drawings, the drawing of three pandas, with, which is just spectacular, but you can actually see as it goes along how she develops this process, and it's really quite amazing to watch it unfold like this. Uh, and also tell me more about the, the pandas. What was the time length that it actually took you to do this particular drawing? I think the pandas took me about 15 hours because it was quite a big mm -hmm. picture. Mm -hmm. It was actually for the um, Artists, Artists magazine. Mm -hmm. They asked me to do an original piece for that and asked me to do three separate pictures. Sure. Um, to, as a time, and we decided to do it as a time lapse as well. So we did a, a time lapse video. It's great stuff. I mean, it's obviously working quite well on our show. Yeah. But also, a piece like that, now you've sold drawings for up to $3,000. Yes. Uh, now, the elephant that we're working on today, what would you normally get for that framed? Framed about five fifty. dollars Okay. And say the tiger. I mean, I love the tiger piece, uh, the, the mother and the cub. Uh, what would you get for that framed? Around about eight twenty five. dollars oh, it's, it's, uh, They're just a sensational prices, viewers. And uh, to own one of Terry's works, what I think would be an absolute privilege. Um, also, uh, your website. Tell us about your website. Yes, my website is www.drawnwild.com. Okay, sensational. All right, viewers, as you can see, another amazingly talented lady. I mean, this is what you need to do to create incredible graphite drawings like this. Uh, Terry, thank you so much for having us in your studio. Thank you so much for coming. I've really loved it. It's been an amazing day, and as you can see, just just by a little elephant with a, with a magnificent whimsical name that goes with it. She's created just a small masterpiece and it's just been a, a great deal of fun. Before we go, our DVDs uh, are just simply going nuts. Uh, we're producing these days in uh, quite large quantities. So, but if you would like copies of the series, uh, all of the ones that we've done, and there's quite a few of them here now, uh, just get in touch with us at colourinyourlife.com.au. Uh, you can come in and see Terry's work in there. Uh, we'll have her originals for sale, as we said, we dis dis discussed the price as well. But uh, as always, remember, until we see each other again, make sure you put some colour in your life. We'll see you next time, guys. Bye now.